We are gonna begin our discussion of statistical tests with the t-test of means. This is a good place to start because it's one of the simplest statistical tests and we can use it to illustrate some of the methods that we use in R as well as some of the key ideas of statistics that we're gonna be talking about. Here are some characteristics of the t-test of means. The independent variable, which is the one that you're controlling in your experiment, is discontinuous. That means in R, it's gonna be represented as a factor. The dependent variable, that's the one we are measuring in the experiment, is numeric, so it's a continuous variable. That independent variable, which is a factor or a grouping variable, can only have two levels in a t-test of means. What we want to find out using the t-test of means is whether the two levels of the independent variable have significantly different means for the continuous variable that we're measuring. The t-test of means is exactly the right kind of test for a controlled manipulative experiment like the one that we were describing for the science fair where you have beans planted in wet and dry soil because you are manipulating the amount of water and basically seeing what happens. In a lot of contexts, this type of experiment is called a randomized controlled trial or RCT. The question in this particular example would be whether the mean height for the wet level is different from the mean height for the dry level. In order to carry out a t-test of means in R, there are certain requirements for the form of our data. First of all, we have to have two vectors as the source of our data, or we can use two columns from a data frame. One, the independent variable has to be a factor or converted into a factor. The other one, the de dependent variable must be numeric. And it must be organized in the form of tidy data. That is the category data that is a factor has to be in a single column. We can then carry out the t-test by using one of the following two formats. If the source data are vectors, we can put the dependent variable, and then a tilde, and then the independent variable in terms of the names of the vectors first, followed by a comma. And then the second argument is that the variance dot equal attribute is true. That's because the kind of t-test of means that we are doing is a test for two samples that have equal variances. There is another alternative that can be used if the variances are not equal. If the data are part of a data frame, then we want to add an additional argument, the data equals, and then the name of the data frame. That allows us to avoid having to include the name of the data frame when we specify the columns. We can just simply list the columns here. Uh, alternatively, we could leave that out and specifically list what the data frame is that the columns are from by using the dollar sign notation. In order to make things a little less messy, I've used the little broom icon here to clear out my global environment and also my console window. So that means I'm going to have to read the data from the internet back in again. So I've gone ahead and done that. Here's our data of heights of men and women that we had before. To run the t-test of means, we simply give the name of the data frame and then have our two columns that we want to use. The independent variable, which is our factor, comes second. The dependent variable, which is our uh, numbers, comes first. So here's the dependent variable. Here's the independent variable. When we run this in the console window, we can see that it's done a two sample t-test and there's a summary of a number of different things here. The value of t, the p-value, confidence intervals, and estimates of the mean. So we'll, let's break this down and see what some of these different things mean that we got as the outcome of the test. 